Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you're having a great morning so far. Uh, my name is Anshuman Dash uh, and I'm a software developer, product manager at K15T. And today uh, I'll be sharing with you the secrets to the art of self-management that I have learned working in a cross-functional self-managed teams over the last few years. Um, and in this presentation, I'll talk about what it means to be a self-managed organization and what are its benefits. Then, then we'll take a deep dive into the three pillars of a successful self-managed organization that are leadership teams and the individuals and learn about their contribution in bringing about a successful transformation. And along the way, we'll also take a look at some examples of how um, we do self-management at K15T. Um, and if I do my job right, then hopefully by the end of it, you will have learned how self-management can help you transform your organization by nurturing a motivated and high-performing teams and creating an environment where employees derive a sense of purpose from the work that they do and drive innovation. So I joined K15T in the fall of 2017 as an intern. And around the same time, uh, K15T was transforming itself into a self-managed organization. Um, and less than a year later, um, I had the opportunity to work with a brand new cross-functional self-managed team, uh, building a product from conception to launch. We called the project the Roadmap to Las Vegas. And within a span of six months, we were able to put together a new team kick off the project, come up with designs, develop a fully functional app, conduct usability tests, run a successful marketing campaign, and have a successful launch, all with the absence of a full-time designer and even a product, uh, project manager. And in the process, we came up with new development patterns, work processes, and team best practices, which over the years have made its way into different teams within K15T as well. Now, the project was a great learning experience for the company, the teams, and the individuals involved. It was reassuring and, and reaffirming that self-management was truly working. We, not only did we see an increased motivation and commitment among the individuals, but we saw higher motivation and productivity on a team level. And over the last two years, I as an individual and we as a company have continued to evolve and learn more about working in self-managed teams, replicating its success in different projects, building new products, and in the process, perfecting the art of self-management. Now, the philosophy of self-management is rooted in the ideas of trust, ownership, and a sense of purpose derived from one's work. It involves individuals and teams taking up the responsibility of executing their own tasks and monitoring and managing their own performance. It's about the shift in the organization culture uh, the, from assigning tasks to delegating the power to take decisions owning one's work and participating meaningfully in shaping the organization's future. In fact, a successful implementation of a self-management model has been shown to improve cost savings, result in greater innovation, improve productivity and uh, higher commitment of teams, higher morale and motivation of team members, and an increased compatibility between the employer and the employees. But in order for such a model to be truly successful, change needs to happen at all three levels of the organization. To begin with, the leadership needs to drive this transformation by enabling a company culture where the leaders act as guides um, more than managers. Then the teams need to share the leadership responsibility by owning their work and ensuring alignment. And finally, the individuals need to monitor and manage their own performance, bring their A game onto the table and be the driving force for innovation. Together, they form the three pillars of a successful self-managed organization. And for the rest of this presentation, we'll take a deeper look at each of these individually, starting with leadership. The success of self-management in the organization largely depends on a strong foundation built by the leadership. Therefore, as the leaders of your organizations, you will need to experiment, take risks, but most importantly, you have to be open to change and share the responsibility of that transformation with the entire organization. But such a transformation involves a lot more than simply introducing self-managed teams at your companies. In order to sustain a successful self-management model, the leadership needs to create an environment where the team's goals are in alignment with the vision of the organization, where the teams feel trusted and encouraged to do their best work and where they have the autonomy to take important decisions pertaining to their everyday work. 
Now let's try to understand what each of these mean and learn how, the role of leadership in their enablement. So shared vision is what every member of the organization wants to achieve together as part of the organization. It's not something that's enforced by an individual, but built collectively. In the absence of an individual enforcing alignment in self-managed organizations, having a shared vision of the future creates common interests among members of the organization. It also creates a shared sense of purpose, which is a key driver in the success of self-managed organizations. At K15T, we conduct um, a company-wide workshop called Discovery Days, where everyone comes together to literally paint the picture for the future of the company. During this workshop, we discuss the company's vision. We talk about our values. Uh, we share our motivations. We look at different trends um, and, and have an open conversation about what we need to do collectively in order to achieve our shared vision for K15D. But this is just one way of doing things and may not even work for every organization. But what is important here is to understand the fundamental steps that you could take to create a shared vision for your organization. Start with your North Star. As the leaders of your organization, start by defining the vision for your company. Ask yourself, will the vision create a strong organizational culture? Will it encourage people to actually care about contributing to the success of the organization? And if the answer is yes, then make the vision bold and communicate it clearly and often. Be real, be vulnerable. Be brutally honest and reflect on your values. Identify what is working for you and what is not and seek help. No one likes a know-it-all and indestructible superheroes are one-dimensional and unrelatable. Therefore, ask for input and welcome feedback from everyone. Be honest, being honest and vulnerable will help you get buy-in from everyone within the organization and establish organizational trust, which is a foundational component of any successful organization. But most importantly, strategize and commit. Lay out your driving forces and establish your core values. Ask questions like, what do you want to achieve and what changes will be needed to get there? Collectively identify opportunities to close the gap between your vision and your reality. Break the identified opportunities into achievable actions, set goals, and most importantly, commit to them. Following these three simple steps will help you create a shared vision and lay out the groundwork for organizational trust. Now, when teams work autonomously and take important decisions independently, it is crucial that they feel empowered to be able to do their best work. This sense of empowerment is derived from an environment where the teams and the leadership can share a sense of mutual trust. Now, building organizational trust is a slow and continuous process and at times may even demand a change in the company culture. But there are two simple steps that can set you off in the right direction. The first step to building organizational trust is through open communication. At K15T, most of the leadership confluence spaces are open to everyone. In addition to that, the leadership publishes important information about the company's strategies regularly on our internal blog. They have set up dashboards where every team can monitor and uh, the performance of all the apps and the company in general. Therefore, by taking this lead, the leadership has created a culture of openness, which leads to constant flow of information, which in turn reinforces trust within the organization. The second step is through meaningful participation. At K15T, this is achieved through open workshops such as Discovery Days, where everyone is encouraged to participate in shaping the future of the company. And by having an open and transparent feedback channel for every important and strategic decisions along with the day-to-day -day activities within the company. Meaningful participation is quintessential to empowering individuals and teams and creates a culture of trust within the organization. Now, trust forms the backbone of any self-managed organization, but trust without the power to exercise it is of no use to anyone. Teams need to have some level of autonomy when it comes to the decision-making process. And to do so, in addition to trust, they need to be empowered with the right information, be given the necessary resources, and be provided with proper guidance. 
So the question is, how do you do autonomy right? Well, the key lies in leading instead of managing. At K15T, we do not have managers. Instead, we have housekeepers who are more like guides as opposed to micromanaging overlords. The housekeepers do a fantastic job of making sure that all teams have what they need, the necessary tools, the resources, and information to work autonomously. They conduct one-on-one -on -one check-in sessions with team members to get their feedback, hear about their goals, and help with planning. They consult with the teams, provide feedback, share their wisdom, and help eliminate obstacles. Simply by changing the leadership style, encouraging teams to do their own uh, to own their work, educating them with the right skills and empowering them with the necessary information, you can cultivate a strong culture of autonomy. And it all starts right at the leadership. But leadership cannot be expected to work in isolation. Once the groundwork has been laid out, the baton needs to be passed on to the teams. Now, studies have shown that when successful self-managed teams can be 15 to 20% more productive than any other teams. They can be more innovative, develop quicker and more effective decision-making skills, and even result in increased motivation and commitment. At K15T, we have self-managed product teams for more than two years now. And in this time, we have observed that the success of self-managed teams greatly depends on two important factors. Shared leadership, where teams take up the ownership of their work and monitor their performance, thus sharing the leadership responsibility with the company's leadership. And alignment, where teams are aware of what they have to achieve and how, and are driven by the company's goals and guided by its vision. Let's start with leadership. Now, self-management can get tricky when it comes to leadership. If the teams manage themselves, then is there a need for leadership at all? And if yes, then who's the boss? Who takes all the decisions? Who's in charge of keeping track of things? Well, the easy answer is no one, but the difficult answer is everyone. Self-managed teams require a different kind of leadership where, uh, where the leadership responsibility is shared between the members of the teams, also known as internal leaders, and leaders external to the teams. Now, external leaders are the individuals managing the boundary between the teams and the larger organization, um, enabling the teams, guiding them, making sure they have what they need to run autonomously. They also make sure that the teams are aligned well with the company goals, but more on that later. A perfect example of external leaders would be the housekeepers. Within the teams, everyone is responsible for the work that they do and leadership is encouraged at an individual level. In our team, we encourage everyone, every member to take up ownership of at least one item on our quarterly roadmap. We call them feature owners, and it is their responsibility to plan, coordinate, manage dependencies, and execute tasks. It's almost like working in micro cross-functional teams within our larger self-managed teams, uh, where the feature owners take up the leadership role. This not only makes leadership scalable, but encourages meaningful participation among team members. The second key to success, successful self-managed teams is alignment. Now, true alignment is when every single person involved understands what they are doing, why they are doing it, and what impact it has on the organization as a whole. Now, as an organization, you may have defined a clear vision and have a rock solid strategy in place, but without proper alignment, the execution is most likely to fail. The same applies to self-managed teams. If the members of the teams are not aligned on the whys of their work, and if stakeholders do not have the visibility into the goals and plans of the teams, things can go off track really, really fast. Therefore, it is crucial to be as transparent as possible both within and outside the teams. At K15T for external alignment, we make use of Trello boards that are visible to the entire company. These boards list the goals of the teams and their short-term and long-term plans. We manage our roadmaps on Confluence and keep it open to everyone within the company. We also conduct regular demos where we invite stakeholders to showcase what we're working on and get their feedback and insight, ensuring that we stay on the correct path. For internal alignment, we make effective use of our Scrum meetings. We use stand-up meetings for alignment between team members, sprint planning and retrospectives for alignment between feature owners. 
And during our quarterly roadmap planning, we look at numbers together, go through customer feedback, dive into research, and then collectively plan our quarters. But when it comes to alignment in self-managed teams, communication is the key. It ensures constant flow of information and prevents teams from turning into silos. At K15T, besides the usual channels like Slack, we make extensive use of Confluence for communication. No matter what you're looking for, whether it is lunch schedules, team plans, meeting notes, or roadmaps, there's a good chance you will find a Confluence page for it. Because we believe in the idea that if it's in your head, then it should be on a Confluence page. For broadcasting information, we use blogs from team updates to wedding announcements, from policy changes to strategic decisions. Everything goes into a blog post. Teams also share weekly updates at the company-wide all hands in meeting, making communication proactive. Alignment acts like this lens that focuses the team's energy in the right direction, enabling them to cut through challenges and get shit done. But in all, all the conversations about self-managed organizations and the teams that power them, it's quite easy to forget about the individuals that make up the teams. As an individual, getting used to a self-managed framework can get overwhelming. You may find yourself lost in the absence of an hierarchical structure. But the key to embracing self-management is to slowly ease into it. Start small and pull your own weight. Take ownership of your tasks and execute them well. Identify the leave decisions and take them. Become comfortable with delegating your work and managing your time. Take care of yourself and find time to think and learn. Be proactive with communication and talk to your team members. Ask for help and offer it to others when they need it. Be open to and take advantage of opportunities. Step out of your comfort zones. Try something different, something new. Take up a new project. If you are the developer on the team, try giving a demo to or talking to your customers. If you are a designer, maybe try writing a blog post about the next big feature. If you are the marketer, maybe spend some time answering support tickets and conduct user interviews. Doing so will not only enrich your personal and professional experience, but also help you appreciate the various roles that your teammates take up on a daily basis and help improve compatibility and cohesion within the teams. With no one to do it for you, take up the ownership of your personal and professional growth. Identify your goals, talk about them with your housekeeper, make them realistic and pursue them. At K15T, we do not have performance reviews where managers evaluate are your performances based on your achievements. Instead, we encourage, we are encouraged to conduct self-evaluations by planning our own goals and recording our achievements on what we call a feed sheet. A feed sheet is a confluence page where everyone puts out things they want to achieve in the year, discuss them with their housekeepers, and record their progress throughout the year. This not only eliminates the bias that comes with traditional performance evaluations, but also provides a self-managed means to help us visualize and celebrate our own achievements and growth. But most importantly, do not hesitate to bring your whole self to work. This way you will not only enrich your teams and derive meaning from work, but in the grand scheme of things, contribute to the success of the organization. Self-management boils down to creating a culture where the leadership takes up the role of a guide by creating a shared vision for the future and decentralizing the decision-making power, where the teams are empowered to work autonomously and where the individuals feel comfortable bringing their whole selves to work, deriving meaning from work and drive innovation. Self-management is an art. And like any other art form, it needs time, effort, commitment in order to be perfected. There's no formulas for success, only guidelines to help you figure out your own path. As an organization, you will need to get your hands dirty and try out what works best for you you will need to be ready to transform and share the responsibility of the transformation with everyone within your organization. Eight years ago, while browsing through memes at work, I had stumbled across this quote that I feel captures the essence of self-management perfectly. And it goes something like this. If you want to build a boat, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work and give orders. Instead, Teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea.
Thank you.